Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are doing a thrift to treasure. So I'm taking five items that are recently thrifted and we are turning them into beautiful treasures. I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, I recently thrifted this at the Goodwill bins and right away when I saw it, I thought I am going to paint a snowman face on here. And then after I did my other flip today, that inspired me to do something completely different with this one. So I am taking DIY's Marquee, which is by far my favorite red for the holidays. And and I'm applying two even coats of Marquee. Uh, DIY paint is a clay-based paint which virtually sticks to everything. Uh, as long as you seal it um, and let it cure, it will uh, definitely hold up. So I uh, am going to speed up the process here by taking my heat gun and uh, zapping it uh, so that I can get the two layers of paint dried pretty quick. So now that it is dry, I am taking uh, the reindeer from the set from IOD called Cozy, and we are using the permanent ink, uh, white ink from IOD as well, and we are just inking up that reindeer. And what I am doing here then is I'm going to centerize it on the round, push it down firmly, hold it in place, and then rub all over to get a really nice impression of that deer. Uh, from here, what I'm using then is black velvet from DIY, and I am going to uh, paint, just hand paint around the edge, a black ring. I want it to look really natural. Uh, I know it's not perfect, and that is not what I was going for. I didn't want perfection. I wanted it to look like the ring around the top and I think it turned out just perfect. So I um, just, like I said, I'm doing this all by hand. I'm trying not to touch the reindeer because uh, it is still wet, um, and I'm just trying to have a real steady hand here. Uh, right before this, I did have a very large cup of coffee, and that probably wasn't <laughs> my best idea, but I think it turned out pretty good otherwise. Now that it is completely dry, I am using Big Top from DIY and I am applying one even coat to seal the entire piece. Anytime you're using DIY paint, you do need to seal it with some type of top coat, whether that be Big Top, a poly, or a wax. And then I'm going to let this dry very thoroughly and it will be set. For project two, I recently thrifted this at the Goodwill bins and I knew that I wanted to paint it white and distress it back. Uh, I then came up with the idea to use the new IOD paint inlay called Noel. And uh, there are so many cool uh, different pages within that paint inlay. Um, so how they work is you do apply one coat of paint to your project Project, let that dry very thoroughly and then you come back and add a second coat. Here is the paint inlay Noel. It has several sheets of amazing 
inlays. Now I am using the sheet that has these ornaments on it and I am going to trim it down. I am also going to cut off that secondary paint inlay to use for a different project. I lay it out and then I determine that I want to add some writing below so I just trim a little bit more and then I'm ready to get started. So like I said you do want to have one even coat of paint on your entire project and if you're working with larger pieces you want to work in sections. Now this is just a small so I am going to just apply one even coat of paint to the entire piece. I did pick up a little tip from another stockist that really to activate the paint on your paper, just use your fine mister and I spray the entire paint inlay with that misting bottle. I am going to start on the top, eye it up, and I am going to lay it down. Now, the key here too is just to try to get out as many wrinkles as possible and I then miss the entire piece, take a damp rag, and then really embed that paint inlay into the wet clay-based paint uh, from DIY. I am using White Swan, which is a very vibrant white and it's really going to make these ornaments pop. Now I'm just going to finish the rest of the platter with the second coat so it all dries at the same time. And before you remove the paint inlay, you do wanna make sure that it is thoroughly dried. So here it's completely dry. I just take my misting bottle and I mist the whole piece and I then take my damp rag and wipe away any excess water. Now on a typical piece of furniture, the paint inlay typically does not pull up any of the paint. I'm guessing because this is on like a metal platter, what you're gonna see is some of the paint, um, it actually pulls it up, which I I don't mind because I was planning on distressing this piece back so all the edges and the handles I want to have um, some of that silver pop through and the paint inlay does it for me as well so as I'm pulling it up you can see the actual ornaments are really all that paint um, is embedded in the DIY clay based paint and some of the other paint is being pulled up from that paint inlay but I love it and I what I do to enhance it is I do just take a damp rag and I continue to distress the rest of the entire platter now this is not for everyone and I know that a lot of people don't like things that are distressed or worn uh, but that was the look I was going for so I really liked the fact that the paint inlay pulled some of that up um, but that might be something to consider if you're using a paint inlay on metal versus on like a wood piece. So now that it is completely dry, what I'm doing is using the stamp set cozy again, and I am going to have the word snuggle up right below those ornaments. I am just using a piece of backing and the IOD permanent black ink, uh, inking that word snuggle up first, or the, the word snuggle, we're going to eye that up. Uh, the key here is just to, um, once you lay it down, um, just make sure you do not move it. So I lay it down and then I just rub all over and pull it up and then you have a really nice clean image and then I um, do the same thing with up. Now all the products that I'm using in today's video, the DIY paint, uh, the IOD products, recycled paper, you can find available on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. 
Now that the piece is entirely dry, I'm going to go and seal it with Big Top. What I have found to be very successful is I load up my paintbrush and I don't put a lot of pressure to um, cause any smearing. And I, like I said, I just load up my paintbrush with the Big Top and I just rub it over to give a nice even layer. I have heard from others that when they use a paintbrush on the paint inlay that they've had smearing. I think they put too much pressure on the actual paint inlay um, and the brush is not loaded up enough. But if that is the case for you, another solution would be to use like a spray um, instead to seal it and then do a secondary seal with a paintbrush. For project three, I thrifted these a while ago at Goodwill. They were on the clearance rack and I am going to pull off the tags, clean that up. And my vision for these is I like the silver, but I wanna add a little white. And I'm going to repurpose the red flowers that are in here, but I'm pulling out the rest. So I'm using DIY's White Swan and I am going to apply two even coats of paint to both of these. I'm going to let them dry very thoroughly in between coats and then we are going to come back and we are going to wet distress them. I'm using a damp rag and I am going to randomly wipe all over just to bring a little bit of that silver from underneath out. And like I said, I'm just going to randomly do that over each of the containers and you can pull out a little of the silver or a lot. I wanted to have just a medium amount. Um, I just wanted to look a little festive and I think that silver did that. Now that both of these are completely dry, I'm going and sealing them with Big Top from DIY. I am adding just one even coat to each of these containers, let them dry, and then we're going to come back and we are going to decorate. I found these greens at Walmart and I only had one of these other greens. So I'm going to go back um, and pick up a couple of the others. But how I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with these first. I'm going to randomly just stick uh, chunks of them every which way. Then I'm going to put the red flowers back in. And I also found these white um, sprigs there at Walmart too. Now, I like I said, I only had one of the other sprigs. I'm going back and seeing if I can get more because I think that other those other textures just add a lot to um, these containers. And I just think that this will be a really nice added touch to my booth.
for project four. I thrifted this recently at the Goodwill bins. And after I was at the bins, I had it on to one of my favorite shops in downtown Appleton. And there was the coolest little container just like that there at um, the shop, except it had a red stripe and it had little reindeer on it. And I thought, you know what? I can replicate that with my recent find. So I broke out my stamp set, Cozy from IOD. I am prepping it. So if you haven't used any of the stamp sets before, you just take a sanding block and you rub it all over the stamps just to prep them for ink. I'm taking the reindeer that I want to use off of that, um, off of the backing, and I'm trying to determine how wide of a red stripe I want. I'm going to take blue painter's tape and I'm just going to eye it up and wrap it all the way around uh, so that I can get a nice even um, stripe all the way around this container. Now I'm taking Marquee from DIY and I am going to apply two even coats to the entire piece and or to the, the stripe. I'm going to try to uh, make as little brush strokes as I possibly can. Just try to even that out. Um, in between coats, I am going to let it dry very thoroughly and I am using my heat gun to speed up the process of it. Now that it is completely dry, I am taking the white permanent ink from D IOD and I am going to ink up my reindeer. And initially I'm like, how am I going to make sure that I have an even, like that they're spread out evenly. So I decide to find the center here. I put my first reindeer on this side. Then I turn it and then I put a reindeer next to one of the handles and then I just start evenly spreading them out. And I think I did a pretty darn good job. I was a little nervous at first because I'm like, oh gosh, are they going to be spread out evenly or is there not going to be enough room? Um, but I think that they turned out pretty darn amazing. Now that the white reindeer are dry, I'm coming back and I'm going to seal it all with Big Top. But I want to point out that what I did in between, and I thought I was videotaping and I was not, I did add two black stripes, one on each side of the red stripe. And I just did that by hand like I did with the first project. Um, I just hand painted the little um, line. So I think it just add, it finishes the red stripe off. For my fifth and final project this morning, I was dropping my daughter off at school and this was in the junk. So I grabbed it right away. I knew I could very easily fix this with some Gorilla wood glue. I squirt a little inside of the opening and then a little on the actual leg itself. And once I put it all in there um, or get the leg back on, I did take my brad nailer and I did apply or I used my brad nailer to just nail on the top and the bottom and I did that to each of the legs just to give it a little bit more stability and to hold it in place so that when, you know, when it dries it's really firmly um, held. 
I'm using Marquee from DIY and I'm going to paint the base of this uh, Marquee or the red and then on the top I am going to use uh, White Swan because my vision here is I'm going to use um, Roy cycled paper on the top and I'm using one of the um, vintage sacks on the top with a rooster on it and I thought the red of the rooster um, would be perfect um, with a base of marquee. So I'm applying uh, an even layer of marquee to this piece and I'm going to let it dry then come back add a secondary coat let that dry very thoroughly and then we're gonna work on the top. So here you can see uh, the top was actually pretty decent, uh, but I had a different vision for this. So I'm adding two even coats of White Swan to the top and I just want to try to get just the top um, piece, uh, the White Swan and everything else, the marquee. Here is the Roy cycled paper that I am using and I really wanted to use just the round portion of this paper but unfortunately the table was just a little bit bigger than where that rooster is. So I am actually having to use where it says net 100 pounds just a little piece of that as well. So I now have the other side of this paper to use on a different project and then the red comb broiler mesh on another project. So from here, we are going to decoupage this to the top of that table. My favorite medium to use is liquid patina from DIY to decoupage uh, the Roy cycled papers down. First, I lay it out, determine where I want this to be, and then I start applying the liquid patina. Typically what I do is I like to work in sections. So I start at the top and work my way down. Because this is round and the edges are slightly curved, what I decided to do was um, get the whole center with the liquid patina, then lay down, eye it up, make sure it's right in the center, and then start um, smoothing it out from the center to the edges. And I really think it worked out very nicely. Now that it's completely dry, I'm taking sandpaper and we are going to get rid of the excess paper. I just take the piece of sandpaper and I sand away from the actual paper. So I sand down and it very easily pulls away any of the excess paper, it sands it off. Uh, you don't tear anything and it just gives you a really nice clean finish. Now that I have the top done, we're going back to the base. I am wet distressing the entire base uh, with a damp rag. And again, I just want a little bit of that detail of the brown comp popping through the red. And I love um, distressing items because anytime you paint pieces, there's always the chance that something could get chipped or dinged and this is just a natural way to um, make it look like it has years of age. Now I'm going to seal it with Big Top. I do seal the entire base and then I went back to the top. Because it is on a table, typically I seal with liquid patina, but because I'm it is on this table, I did seal it with Big Top as well. I can't wait to hear what you guys all think, but I do want to apologize for Friday's video. 
Honestly, every time we get rain here in Wisconsin, I swear my internet has issues uploading videos. Um, with that said, moving forward, I am gonna try to be a little bit more proactive and get it uploaded a little bit sooner so we don't have those problems when it rains. So I can't wait to hear, like I said, what you guys all think. My favorite item, honestly, was that little table. For such an inexpensive amount, I was able to flip it with just a little paint and uh, that Roycycle paper. So you can definitely use that like all year long, but it is perfect for the holidays with that pop of red. So um, Friday's video, I'm gonna just keep on flipping. Actually, I started flipping um, some more items today. Uh, I have a lot of items that I wanna get in my booth for the holidays and I'm definitely gonna be working on more. Uh, so I can't wait to show you what I all have in store for you on Friday. And you guys have yourself a great week, but if you are around tonight at six o'clock, I will be going live over on Facebook. I do that every Monday and Wednesday, and I have been putting out more content over there. So definitely, if you haven't yet, go ahead and follow me on all my other socials. That way, um, I, you know, you can definitely help me hit my goal of 10K by the end of the year over on Facebook. So, um, but anyways, you guys have yourself a great week and we will see you all on Friday. Bye.